Good morning and welcome to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. It is Wednesday, April 6th and it is 9, 10 a.m. And uh, we are looking at S-163, an act relating to state court petitions for vulnerable non-citizen youth. And we're starting with a walkthrough of the bill with our legislative counsel, Rebecca Wasserman. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, um, Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. So I uh, will do a walkthrough of S-163, uh, which relates to um, vulnerable non-citizen uh, children. Just for some context, uh, the legislature, I think two years ago, um, added some language in uh, Title 14, which this bill is amending which allowed for um, certain state courts to make special findings with respect to uh, special immigrant juvenile status. And that is a status that is under federal law that allows um, immigrant, immigrant children that are subject to those uh, state courts who can't reunify with their parents due to abuse, abandonment, or neglect, and who meet other um, requirements under federal law to obtain lawful permanent immigration status. And what is somewhat different about this special immigrant juvenile status is that it is a, an immigration uh, remedy that is um, requires a state court order as a prerequisite to file for the petition with um, USCIS for that immigration status. So um, what that means is that the child that is seeking the status first has to ask um, what the federal law calls a juvenile court in the state where the child is living to make certain findings. Um, and uh, in in for um, that the, the federal law says that that court has to um, have jurisdiction under state law to make judicial determinations about the custody and care of juveniles. So what was put into law a couple of years ago was that um, the probate and family courts, um, because in Vermont both probate court and family court share this um, definition, uh, share this jurisdiction and, and fall under that juvenile court definition under federal law. Um, were given the ability to um, make these um, findings that are necessary for this immigration status uh, petition by an immigrant child. Um, the federal law also says that this status is available to, um, to, to youth who are unmarried and under 21. Um, but in Vermont, that currently means that this is not available to a child um, when they turn 18, because that's when um, the court's jurisdiction here would, would end when a child turns 18. So the result of that, and what this one of the things this bill is trying to address is um, having non-citizens who are in Vermont between the ages of 18 and 21 who would otherwise meet um, the requirements under federal law and be eligible um, to petition for this status to be able to do so. Um, so uh, what this bill is, I guess, trying to do is address that, um, <clears throat> expand that jurisdiction of the state's guardianship provisions for that limited purpose of allowing Vermont courts to issue these special findings for non-citizen youth up to age 21. And it is also just sort of generally amending the law that was put into place um, a couple of years ago by removing all of the specific references to special immigrant juvenile status in statute and, and um, sort of replacing it with um, non-citizen child, and also um, at the same time um, clarifying that um, a child who meets these definitions can petition for these findings in any type of proceeding um, where, where the Vermont courts have jurisdiction over that child, not just in probate in family court. Um, so that was a lot. I just thought it might be some helpful context before going through the bill. And I don't know if there are any initial questions before I start. Thank you, that, that was very helpful. This is, is new to us. Uh, I'm not seeing any hands. Anybody have a question or point? Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, so I'll start in section one of the bill, which is amending um, that the law that was put into place a couple of years ago, which is in Title 14, um, Chapter 111, Subchapter 14. And this is the, the new chapter that was put in about um, giving those findings for a special immigrant juvenile status. So that is um, so the, the change that is being made here is amending the title and also you'll see throughout this whole um, section the from um, referring to special immigrant juvenile status and replacing it with vulnerable non-citizen children. And um, there are some definitions in subsection A that are being added to kind of clarify what that means here. So a child or children means an unmarried uh, individual or individuals who have not yet turned 21 and who are not US citizens. Um, a definition of court is added on, in subdivision two, um, which means a court that has jurisdiction over that child. And the definition says that it includes uh, probate and family court, but it can also be any court that might have jurisdiction over that, that particular person. Um, subdivision three defines dependent on the court, um, which means that the, they're subject to the jurisdiction of the court um, that is a court that's competent to make decisions concerning the protection, well-being, care, and custody of a child for findings, orders, or referrals to support that health, safety, or welfare of that child. Uh, subdivision four um, defines non-citizen, which means any person who is not a U.S. citizen. And then subdivision five uh, defines similar circumstances, which is one of the, th these are all relevant to the, what's required under federal law for um, these special findings, but si similar circumstances is defined as uh, a condition or conditions that have um, an effect on a child compare, comparable to abuse, neglect, or abandonment, including the death of a parent and then finally, um, vulnerable is defined as um, there is reasonable cause to suspect that the child's uh, health, safety, or welfare is in jeopardy due to abuse, neglect, abandonment, or similar circumstances, and that the child um, uh, and that the return of the, to the child to, the, to their country or their, their parents' country of origin would not be in the best interests of that child. Let's see any questions, so I will move on to subsection B. <clears throat> um, so subsection B is clarifying um, which state courts have jurisdiction to review a petition for these findings. Um, so, and it is also um, sort of striking out this, the specifics to referring to the special immigrant juvenile status and the federal law. So it is um, more simplified to just give that jurisdiction to a court that um, a court reviewing the, a petition under the section shall have jurisdiction under Vermont law to make these judicial determinations regarding the custody and care of, of children. So that can be probate and family court, but it could also, for example, be criminal court if the child is under uh, that court's jurisdiction. Um, subsection C uh, is setting forth the procedure for a petition for these special findings for a vulnerable non-citizen child or a person that's in, interested in the wel welfare of that child. And you'll see on um, <clears throat> page uh, three, this is language that is um, sort of mirroring what is required under federal law for special immigrant juvenile status, although it does not specifically say that. So it says that the child may petition the court for special findings to protect the child and obtain relief from the underlying abandonment, abuse, neglect, or similar circumstances. The court um, reviews the petition and any supporting affidavits and other evidence presented and issues findings of fact that determine whether the child um, is a dependent on the court, 
or legally committed to or placed under the custody of a state agency or department or an individual or entity appointed by the court. Um, the child, the findings determine whether the child has suffered from abuse, neglect, abandonment, or similar circumstances. The findings would also look at whether the child may be viably reunified with one or, or both parents due to abuse, neglect, or similar circumstances. And then finally, the last uh, finding would be that it's not in the best interest of that child to return to their home country or their parents' previous country of um, nationality or last habitual residence. Questions? Not seeing anything yet. <laughs> okay. Um, so subdivision two, um, so this was in current law, but the, a party can also request that the court make additional findings that are supported by evidence. And um, it was added here and Vermont law. Um, a new subdivision C3 was added that also says that the court that is considering these, uh, this petition for findings um, the health that the health, safety, and welfare of the child must be paramount of paramount concern to the court when it considers the best interests of the child, and when making the determination of whether the child can be returned to their home country, um, the court shall consider whether present or past living conditions will adversely affect the child's physical, mental, or emotional health. Subdivision C4 is what I mentioned earlier about that sort of gap between a child who is 18 and 21. And um, so this is, uh, for the purposes of this section, is saying that the term child um, shall include a person who is less than 21 years of age and who consents to the appointment or continuation of a guardian after 18 years of age, so it, it can extend that guardianship beyond 18 years old. Um, however, it requires that consent by the person is provided. Subsection D is adding a notice provision. Um, so uh, if the location, uh, if the identity or location of the child's parents are not known, um, the court has the option to um, serve notice using any alternative method of service that court determines is appropriate or waive that service. Subsection E is requiring the court to adjudicate these cases um, expeditiously when it is in the best interest of the child. Um, and just moving to the top of page five, it says that um, they should uh, make determinations on any petition for special findings as soon as it is administratively feasible and prior to that child attaining 21 years of age. Um, subsection F is adding language that allows um, for a voluntary referral of the child to certain protective services um, including psychiatric, psychological, educational, occupational, um, uh, so on. And it says that um, the child's participation in any referred service is voluntary. Barbara, yeah. Rebecca, it's voluntary on the part of the child or on the part of the? Um, on the part of the child. And? Um, somebody else is probably, if somebody's eight or 10, we're let, the child is making that decision or is also, but if they're being made a temporary ward of the court, the court is also, there's a guardian ad litem, the, somebody else. There's a, there, yeah, there's a guardian, the, the court, oh, sorry, the child would, um, probably be under a guardianship, and so that I think in that case, a, a guardian would be um, making those decisions. 
Thank you. Um, subsection G um, allows for additional available remedies under Vermont law. So um, it's saying that um, this section is not limiting um, a, a child under um, the who meets this definition from petitioning for special findings under any other provision of law or from any other rights and remedies that are available to that child under law. Um, and subdivision two says that the section is not limiting the court from issuing similar findings of, of fact um, to that what's described in the section in any other proceedings that concern that child. Um, subsection H says that the section shall be liberally construed to its legislative purpose. And subsection I. Can I ask a question on that? It's a couple questions on H. I mean, is that fairly standard? I haven't seen that kind of way. I mean, occasionally I have, but it seems actually a little odd to me. It's one question. But uh, are there legislate, is there a statement of purpose uh, that just isn't in this bill, but is in the underlying law? Um, there is not. Um... There is not a, an intent um, here. Um, in the next section, uh, there is, uh, with res I think there's a similar, a similar statement about it being construed to the best interests of the child. Um, and so I think the, the idea is that the intent is to allow for um, a child to make these petitions um, to sort of meet the requirements of what is uh, to, to, to make this petition for these findings that are um, a part of this petition to the U.S. government for this immigration status. So um, I, this, I guess this language was added in by um, some, some of the advocates on this bill. So they, they might be better to able to answer um, why it was necessary to put it in. But uh, I think the idea is to intend that, um, that a child can make um, these, can request these petitions under uh, a wider scope of situations than just if they are under the jurisdiction of family or probate court. Yeah, it just mainly seems odd that if we don't have a statement of purpose, uh, where do you find that purpose? But okay, I will ask, I'll ask witnesses. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that might be helpful to include an in, intent because it is referring to a legislative intent here. Thank you. Um, so moving on to page six on Subsection I, um, the new subsection I, is current law, and it says that um, in any judicial proceeding that where one of these uh, petitions for special findings is being made, that certain Im information about that child is um, protected under a law and kept confidential. Um, so what is added to that list um, is the child's nationality or place of birth. Um, and Currently, um, it it's refers to the child's immigration status. Um, so that is just expanding um, that sort of confidentiality provision there. Uh, subsection D of the underlying law is being struck out. Uh, court was defined, as I mentioned, just as probate and family court. And um, a new definition was added of court in subsection A. So this was um, struck out here. Um, section two of the bill <clears throat> is adding these very similar uh, sort of provisions procedure for these petitions in title 33 um, in the guardianship uh, section. Um, so that it's in both Title 14 and Title 33. 
Um, so the uh, it's, it follows a similar um, structure here. Subsection A is uh, definitions, and these are all the same um, definitions that are in that were added to Title 14. On page seven, subsection B is jurisdiction. Um, this is just in the, the guardianship provision. So this is saying that the family court may retain jurisdiction over a non-citizen child who has not yet um, reached 21 years of age. So it's expanding that jurisdiction to um, someone who is 21. Uh, for the sole purpose of adjudicating a petition for special findings and making judicial determin determinations regarding the custody and care of that child. Um, what is added here is that it says that nothing in this section is intended to expand the scope of the court's jurisdiction to order a youth into the custody of the commissioner, commissioner of children and families. Um, Subsection C is the procedure for making these special findings. And again, this is um, sort of set up to be similar to what is in Title 14. So the uh, non-citizen child um, may petition the court for these special findings. And Subdivision 2 says, in accordance with the procedure that is set forth in Title 14, um, the court shall review these this petition and any supporting evidence um, to make to issue these findings of fact. Um, subsection D is a similar expeditious adjudication. So when it is consistent with the purposes set forth in section 5101 of this chapter, and that's where I think the, the best interests of the child um, determinations are, the court shall hear uh, the, the case and um, issue findings as soon as it is administratively feasible and prior to the citizen turning 21 years of age. Um, subsection E also has a uh, section on additional available remedies under Vermont law, and this is similar to what was in Title 14 that says the child's not limited for from petitioning for special findings under any other provision of, of law or petitioning for any other rights or remedies available to that child. And um, subdivision two says that the court um, is not limited from issuing um, similar findings in um, any other proceeding concerning that non vulnerable non-citizen child. And then finally, subsection F is also adding in this uh, Title 33 section, this um, protection of certain information about the child in any judicial proceeding that is making these findings. Um, so that relates to the child's immigration status, nationality, or place of birth um, that is um, not otherwise protected by state laws, but shall remain confidential. Um, and it is also similar to Title 14, exempting that information from public inspection um, under the Public Records Act. And then finally, on page nine, section three is the effective date, and that is um, July 1st, 2022. Thank you. Robert. So, Rebecca, I apologize that I missed the beginning, and you may have said this. Um, so, I have a few questions. One, the, the need for this is. Do we, do we know like why, and did you already say, I apologize, why Phil was introduced? Um, <clears throat> so I think other folks coming in might, might be able to speak better to the need to make this change, but I will, um, but I, you may have missed what I said earlier that this was something put into law a couple years ago um, for this, um, special, it's called special immigrant juvenile status, which is a status um, available to, to immigrant children under federal law. Um, but it requires, it's, it's sort of unique because it requires a state court um, order that issues certain findings before a child can petition for it. 
And I think that um, the need to make these changes to the language and expand the scope of what courts can issue these findings um, have to do with um, maybe some uh, challenges that children who are making these petitions have been facing um, with the, the law as currently drafted. Thank you. So um, when it says no other um, sort of petitions or actions, so somebody could not file to be emancipated? Um, sorry, which, which part are you? Uh, the very last part you talked about. Uh, shall not. Title 33. Uh, sorry. Well, I'll just explain. So Title 33 is where the guardianship provisions are and under Vermont law. Thank you. Um, a, a child um, after 18 would not fall under those provisions. So what this section is doing is expanding um, the sort of jurisdiction just for this specific purpose of being able to um, apply for this, for this, um, these findings. So you can apply for this um, immigration status to expand a guardianship until that, that child or that youth is 21 um, so that they can still kind of meet the requirements to be able to get those special findings. And that is simply, not simply, but that is because the federal law actually allows this to happen until a child is 21. But Vermont, the way Vermont law is, the child would age out of that guardianship to not allow for it to happen. So this is kind of ex expanding the state law, law jurisdiction just for this limited purpose to be able to meet what is available under federal law. And if I'm rusty because it's been a while since I've been on um, house ed, but my understanding is for special ed, it's like up to 25. So if any of these um, vulnerable non-citizen youth are receiving special education, I don't know how, like if they'd be cut off at 21 and not be able to. Yeah, so my understanding, and I, I just have to, I would have to pull up the federal law, but I, I think the federal law only allows up to 21. Um, so even if under Vermont law, there's some circumstance where someone was under care past 21, it would, um, for this specific purpose for making, for a petition for these findings, for um, being able to petition the government for this immigration status, it would not um, matter that they were, if they were older than 21. And I've got one last. So my concern and part of it is, you know, other bills we've been doing recently, there's no language in here to encourage whoever's making the decisions to make sure that we're placing children. I mean, it talks about harm, but like in the least restrictive setting possible. Because what I would hate to have happen is, oh, we've got room at the women's facility, so let's put some of them there right now because we don't have foster homes or, you know, we don't have another place. So is is there any protection in terms or di direction to not um, have somebody be in a level of restricted or not even necessarily restricted, but probably restricted residential treatment even where that might not be. Um, I, I don't, I think this, I, I don't know that I, I know the answer to that. Um, I don't think so. Um, I guess I'm hesitating because I think a child in this situation who is making these petitions um, would are, might already be under a guardianship. So at that point, that decision, I think, would have been made already. But I don't know the answer to if a child is coming under the jurisdiction of a juvenile court um, 
and has to be placed with a guardian, how if that intersects at all with the the child making a petition in this circumstance. Um, but I don't know if some of the other um, folks coming in today would be able to answer that. Thank you. Um, good morning. I am uh, I'm acting on behalf of Martin Lalonde right now, so I'm just the messenger of this question oh. largely. So this is um, subsection H, which is on page five. Construction, this section shall be liberally construed to its legislative purpose. Um, he's wondering if we need any sort of more of an intent section there or if it's clear enough in the current bill to sort of, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think that's a good question. I think it might it might be helpful because it is referring to a legislative purpose to um, can, for the committee to consider including one so that this section is um, a little clearer to everybody. Can you help just me understand the the purpose of H? Like, what what is what is that doing? Um, I think the uh, intent here is to to make sure that um, that the a child who is making a petition in this for these findings is sort of given the ability to do so under a wider um, a broader scope of situations to make sure that that um, the child can make this petition that is not just restricted to certain you know situations in family or probate court um, so uh, so like any time a child would come under the d jurisdiction of a court, it would be available to that child. Um, so I think if that is the purpose, and, and I, I'm saying this that in that um, this language came from others, so they might be able to better to speak to um, why it's necessary. Uh, but if if um, I think it's helpful because it's obviously raising a lot of questions about what the purpose is to maybe include some purpose language so that it clarifies uh, what it is referring to. Martin and I, thank you. Okay. Okay, any, but seeing any other questions. So thank you so much. We actually have quite a bit of time before we start our, our witnesses. So, um, so why don't we adjourn now, okay. take a break, and then we will.